started. Okay, so it's so great to see everybody. Welcome so much. I'm blocking the view of everybody in the Metro Suite. So Metro Suite people, ignore my tushy. Um, on behalf of Silverman College of Business, I have the pleasure of introducing our own student, Lauren Luna, who is responsible for introducing us to our intern queen. So we are recording this. We are gonna ask that if you have any questions, put them in the chat. And once our intern queen starts speaking to put yourself on webinar view, I think you can just see Lori. If you have any questions, put them in the chat. Please make sure that you continue to mute yourself. And Lauren Luna, without further ado, over to you. All right, I am so excited to be introducing our speaker today. Lauren Berger is the founder and CEO of Intern Queen, Career Queen, and the IQ Agency. She is also the author of Get It Together, Welcome to the Real World, and All Work, No Pay. The voice behind the brand and a pioneer speaker in the internship, career, and college ambassador space. She's a champion for young people, inspiring and motivating millions. A few years ago, she was one of them. Today, she's our hero. On behalf of Fairleigh Dickinson University, Welcome, Lauren Berger. Thank you. And thank you, Lauren. I, I love that you were so instrumental in putting together today's talk. It's always great to have a student on the ground who's passionate about what we do, kind of help um, make sure everything line up, uh, lines up properly. So thank you all for having me. Um, excited to be here today. In terms of what you guys can all expect, I'm going to take the next 40 minutes or so to just sort of chat with you about everything I know. <laughs> We're going to keep this real casual. I want this to be an intimate conversation with all of us. I'm not an expert on everything, but I do know a lot about internships, building your career, and running a business. So I'm hoping to share a lot of tips and tricks with all of you. Um, I'm sure you'll learn a little bit from my story. And then just, you know, from what I experience running a business every day. And then closer to um, like 5.40, 5.45, I definitely want to open it up for questions. Um, I'll probably have everybody... Um, either drop questions in the chat or for the folks that are kind of in person, um, you guys can pick someone over there to sort of moderate. And I would love to spend, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes at the end um, just answering questions. And then we have a hard stop today at six o'clock. So it's going to be a packed 55 minutes or so. And, you know, I'm excited to build a connection with you all, not just for tonight, but hopefully one where we can stay in touch for many years to come. So I think what we'll start with is I'm going to do a, a bit of an intro, and then I want to talk about um, internship advice, career advice, and just some practical skills that you can all um, think about and kind of think about how to set yourself up for success once you get to that workplace. And as I'm talking, feel free to throw things in the chat. I think the more we can all engage, the better. Um, and if I see something in the chat, I can always kind of pivot a little bit too. If you wanna hear more about one thing versus another, it's kind of fun that we, um, that's uh, you know a perk of the Zoom life, right? So let's start by, you know, just me explaining who I am. So I'm Lauren Berger. I'm the C and I'm like, uh, there's my name <laughs> at the bottom, but I'm going to sit on my Zoom screen, and Zoom screen and probably cover it. So I'm the CEO and founder of Intern Queen um, and also of our IQ agency, which is our Gen Z marketing agency. So I'll, I'll give you my quick story. So I'm originally from Florida. Fun fact, I'm in Florida right now. I'm at my parents' house because it is my 20-year high school reunion this weekend. So I am in town for that, and that should be a wild time. Um, but I'm from Florida, and I graduated high school. Um, I ended up going to Florida State University, the Seminoles, for two years, and then I transferred and graduated from UCF in Orlando. Now, I was at Florida State like day one, and my mom called me. I have a um, Jewish mother from Brooklyn, New York, and she would call me and call me and call me and tell me that I had to do internships. I had to do internships. They were the only way. And I didn't really know what an internship was when I was a freshman in college, but I knew if I didn't figure it out, my mom would just continue to call me. So I went to my career center as a freshman at Florida State, and I said, I want an internship. And they looked at me and they said, are you a senior? 
And I said, no, I'm a freshman, but can you help me anyways? And at the time, you know, this is several years ago, they didn't really have a direction to point me in as an eager freshman. They said, none of the internships that we work with except freshmen, like come back when you're a senior. So for all intents and purposes, I was rejected right, by my career center, couldn't be helped at the time. And so I went back to my dorm and I started Googling. Um, I didn't know much about what I wanted to do with my future. I knew that I was probably going to be a communications major. I didn't know too much about communications. And I knew that there were a variety of careers I could take advantage of as a communications major. And a lot of them were in public relations and marketing. And again, I don't want to tell you guys that I, I had it all together and I knew what I was going to do because that's just not the truth. <laughs> so I figured I had to start somewhere. So I Googled public relations internships in Tallahassee, Florida. And I started making a list of all the companies that were coming up. And I, there was one company in particular called the Zimmerman Agency. They had no information on their website about an internship program. So I thought, well, I better call them. And people always tell you never to cold call, right? always cold call. I don't know who those people are telling you to never cold call, but I will tell you, I have found so much success in my career by simply picking up the phone. It can be that easy. So I picked up the phone. I called the Zimmerman agency. I said, I wanted to apply for their internship program. They put the internship coordinator on the phone and she gave me her email and she said, please apply. Right. I didn't say that I was a freshman. I just said, I want to apply for the program. How can I do that? So that night, right, I had just gotten the email that day, but that night I took the time to put my resume together. I didn't have a resume. I was busy. We're all so busy talking about how busy we are these days, right? I was busy too, but I stopped. I prioritized it, right? I put together the resume. I Googled how to do a resume. I had no experience, you guys. I worked at the Red Lobster as a hostess in high school. Um, and I put that on my resume. Um, I was also involved in high school because remember, this is my freshman year, so I didn't have much. So I'm putting my high school student government experience and I was co-captain at the dance team. I'm putting all of this on my resume. And that night, I send it over to the Zimmerman agency. The next day, I get a phone call. It's the internship coordinator. And she says, Lauren, I'm impressed. And I'm thinking, why is she impressed? I have Red Lobster on my resume. But the woman said that whenever she gets a call from students, they almost never follow up the same day. She said, typically students take between two and four weeks to follow up if they follow up at all, or they just fall off the planet. So I impressed her, right? I set myself up for success by prioritizing the resume and by doing an immediate follow-up. So I got the interview. I ended up getting the internship. It was my first internship ever. Um, and I was a freshman and most of the other people they selected were seniors. And I only got the internship because I was able to put my resume together within a timely manner. And so I want to share that advice with you all because every, you know, we're all meeting people all the time, right? Whether it's at a club meeting, at a, you know, you know, your parents have a friend over and they say, oh, I'd love to help you. Here's my card. Whatever it is, we're meeting people all the time. Even a professor that says, you know what? I used to work at this company. I might be able to help you. You have to email people that night. You have to show them that you're taking the opportunity seriously and just, you know, making the time to send that quick email or put together that resume can really take you a long way. And I learned that in getting my first professional experience as an intern. So anyways, got this internship at the Zimmerman agency, loved it. I was, I mean, I went to a huge school in Florida, right? I was one of thousands and thousands of students. I didn't get a lot of personal attention. And at my internship, that was totally different. There were only three interns. So I was getting personalized help every day in learning how to put together media kits and write press releases and things that I knew nothing about. So it was at this internship where I personally had this, like, I call it the click moment in my books, but this like light bulb moment where I said, I like, I want to do more than just be in college, going to classes and joining a sorority and going to football games. Like I want to do more. I'm challenged in a way that I've never been challenged before at this internship. And I, that was it. 
I was hooked. I just wanted to do more and more and more. So I ended up doing a summer internship in New York City, which I know is much closer to all of you than it was to me. <laughs> You're very lucky. You guys can commute in. I could not do that. Um, I ended up uh, staying at the NYU dorms the summer after freshman year to intern. I did a ton of internships locally. I went to Los Angeles after my sophomore year of college. And again, after my junior year of college, very far from Florida, um, to do internships. So by the time I graduated college, I had 15 internships under my belt. And it was never a plan. It was just sort of a fluke that I was like doubling and tripling these internships up and getting a great experience every time. So, oh, I see in the chat, I worked at Red Lobster too. Yes, yes. Um, I love those safari shirts with the fish. Um, so, and I'm looking at the chat now. Could you share more internships with more information about how you managed an internship so far from home. Yeah. Um, so that's a great question. Um, so I did all of these internships and over the summer, um, I would go to New York or LA to do these internships. The way that I got those internships is I would prep for them. I would say like realistically, probably four to six months in advance. And I was really, I mean, at the time there weren't a lot of resources. There's still not that many resources for finding internships, right? LinkedIn is helpful. Indeed can be helpful as well. But I was really big on making my dream list of 10 plus companies that I was interested in. I would always find a dream company. And then I would try to find like three companies like that company that were maybe similar so that if I didn't get the dream company, I would get something like it. But I would make my, you know, I call it the intern queen dream list of companies. And then I would just do the research and I would not let a lack of information get in my way. And I would pass that advice along to all of you. A lot of internship programs have been in limbo lately because of COVID. Um, that doesn't mean they don't exist though. So don't take no for an answer. And also don't take a lack of information on a website as an answer either, like go above and beyond, call the company, DM the company, do whatever you need to do to get someone from the company to respond to you and let you know if there's an internship program and if there is, how to apply for one. And if there's not, can you be the first intern? Worth a shot, right? The worst they can say is no. Um, so I would prep for these internships far in advance. And then of course, if you do get an internship, some of them will offer um, not only pay, but housing. Mine did not. Um, so I was, I paid to live at the NYU dorms when I went to New York City. And in LA, I did like a sublet with a friend one year. And then one year I did corporate housing. Um, so it was a challenge and it was a lot of work, but they were the best summers of my life. And I would, you know, I wouldn't trade the world for them. Um, and you guys are in a better position than I was nowadays, um, I think it's almost 70% of internships are now paid. So we're seeing a drastic shift. And I, my guess is that in the next five years, they're all going to be paid. Um, and how did I manage so many internships at once? You know, I'm one of those that likes to be busy and I thrive on it. Like if I've, if I need to clean my room and I have nothing to do that day, I will not clean my room. But if I have 17 things to do that day, I will, I'll get it done. You know, one of those either really lazy or like really productive. Um, I'm sure some of you can relate, but, um, Usually uh, it was over the summer that I would take on multiple internships and one internship would require like Tuesday, Thursday, and the other internship would require Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So that was typically how I was managing multiple internships. And it was usually over the summer when I was not taking a school course load. Otherwise I would just do one and then I would have school and I'd have work. Um, so anyways, graduating college, and my friends didn't intern at all. And I was trying to understand why, like how come I interned, but they didn't have any internships. And they said that they didn't intern because no one told them to. And I thought that was really interesting. Um, you know, the career center at a huge school can't realistically service everybody. So who is supposed to tell people to intern? Enter the intern queen, right? Could there be a person called the intern queen that speaks to college students and tells them to intern, right? And to take advantage of these professional experiences that you can get while you're in school. And I thought it was a great idea. I thought I could be the Rachel Ray, if you all know who that is, Rachel Ray, the cooking woman. I thought, could I be Rachel, the Rachel Ray of the internship space? So that was how um, the idea for intern queen was born. Um, I didn't have any money to start my own business. I was busy doing all these internships where I wasn't making much money at all. So I asked my parents for some money. They said no. 
quick talk, right? And um, I graduated college. I moved to Los Angeles. That was always sort of the plan. I had three months of savings saved up for my part-time jobs and I had to get a job. I couldn't just start my own business. It was also not very popular back then to start your own business. Very popular today, of course. So I got a job at um, CAA, Creative Artist Agency. They're the largest talent agency in the world. And I was the second assistant to one of the big movie star agents there. Um, it was an amazing job that I was terrible at. Um, I got the job because of all the connections I'd made at my internships. I think it's really important to stay in touch with all of the professors, all of the coaches, all of the um, uh, bosses at your part-time jobs, all of your internship coordinators, because you want to leverage those connections when you actually need a job. So I was able to call everyone and say, hi, remember me? And they had, because I'd been in touch. And um, they were willing to make calls for me. So I was able to land an interview at this agency because one of my former intern bosses um, introduced me. Now my rule, and I'm just going to drop this in the chat, my rule is that you stay in touch three times per year. Follow the semester schedule, whatever, whatever you need to do, put notes, put, uh, you know, invite yourself to um, meetings uh, in your calendar three times a year, whatever you need to do to remember, but you stay in touch with your professional contacts three times per year. I can't say it enough, three times per year at minimum. Um, because again, when you do have a request and you wanna ask a question, it is so much easier to do that when you've built a solid foundation and a relationship with somebody. Um, it's much harder when you reach out to someone and you haven't spoken to them in seven years and you're asking them to recommend you or refer you to something. So you stay in touch with your professional contacts three times per year and that's what I did in college. Um, and so it was easy to reach out when I graduated and to ask for help in landing my first job. So anyways, got my first job at um, CAA, the talent agency. Um, it was very fast paced. It was a wild job, very glamorous, but very hard. And um, I could not stop thinking about my internship idea to start a company called Intern Queen and to help college students. So long story short, I quit my job in 2009. Um, so a long time ago now, and um, I had $5,000 of savings. I lived in Los Angeles, which you all know from being so close to New York City, not cheap, right? So I had maybe two months of, of living expenses saved up with that $5,000. And I said, I'm going to be the intern queen now. There was no plan B, right? Although I guess in my mind, the plan B would have been to work at Starbucks or something while I, you know, continued trying to do this business. But I started and now it's, I'm looking at the date. Now it's uh, 2022. So I guess it's working, right? It's going well. Um, but Intern Queen has changed a lot over the years. So when I started, it was all about me and I wrote books. So I have three books out. Um, I was speaking all over the country, traveling around, driving everywhere. Um, and we were helping students get internships and giving internship advice. Today, many, many years later, you know, we're 10 years later, um, we're still giving a lot of internship advice. I am still the intern queen, as you can see. Um, we do a fantastic event every summer in New York City, which I know some of you were able to attend called the Intern Queen Party. It's totally free. And we have an awesome panel of speakers to help you all get internships and careers. Um, we no longer do internship placement. So while we can be really helpful in terms of advice and I can, oh, I mean, I, my job is to know people and to connect people. So I can always try to connect you with people and to give you ideas. We don't do actual internship placement anymore. Um, and a really big part of our business is our um, IQ agency, where we help college students land paid brand ambassador positions, either to help brands do events, to help them create content for TikTok or Instagram, whatever it might be, to flyer on campus. But it's kind of a win-win because the brand gets to connect with college students, college students get paid and get to put this brand experience on their resume. And we are able to facilitate the whole thing. We make brands happy. We're able to profit from it and make money, which a business you know needs to do. And we're able to connect college students with really cool companies like Duncan, Stuart Weitzman, um, Whole Foods, et cetera. So it's been, it's been really great. So for everybody here, um, I'm just going to drop it in the chat, but make sure you're following um, at Intern Queen on Instagram. You'll see my personal, my personal Instagram too. If you guys need okay, to see cute, just... cute pictures of my child is um, at official Lauren Berger. I just dropped that there. 
And then our website is internqueen.com and that will link internship advice, which is also all over our Instagram. We're also on um, TikTok, TikTok, YouTube, everything is um, TikTok. I'll just drop it in the chat. Is that intern queen? Um, so definitely check it out. And you guys will get a, uh, you know, a ton of advice, everything from like how to do your resume, how to do cover letters um, on Instagram. One of our highlights is all email templates, which is really helpful. Oh, if everyone wants to press on mute on their uh, computers, I think there's some background noise. Um, awesome. So yeah, if you guys need on YouTube, instead of talking about how to contour your face, we talk about how to write the perfect thank you note. So I think you guys will get a lot out of our content. And of course, it's all free for students. Um, we announce our ambassador roles on our Instagram. Um, and then you'll see where you can join our database so that you get emails when we do stuff in your area. Most of our brands either work with specific schools, specific regions, or they're just open nationwide. So you'll see a lot of those popping up um, in the coming weeks. But we just started working with Fabletics um, and, I don't know, Hulu. Uh, we're promoting the D'Amelio show. So we're doing some really cool stuff um, all, over the, all over the U.S. and Canada. So definitely check it out. Um, I want to talk a little bit about just what it's like to work after college these days. And I think what the real world is like and how all of you can kind of think about the skills that you have and how you can use them well in your first job. Um, as the CEO and founder of Intern Queen, I manage a team of eight full-time employees on a day-to-day. -day, and then we manage about 2000 college ambassadors um, at any given time. So there's a lot of learnings all the time, right? We're always learning, but there's some key things that I can probably um, kind of share and throw out at you guys. Um, so, you know, a, a couple things, right? Work in a lot at a lot of companies these days is remote. Um, I obviously run my own business. So an intern queen is remote. We have an office in Los Angeles, but once COVID hit, we started hiring all over the country. We literally have employees in Charleston, South Carolina, in Long Island, in Nashville, in Austin, Texas, in Phoenix. I'm in normally in Los Angeles, the list goes on. So we run a totally remote business. Um, our office is basically a shipping facility <laughs> at this point. We, we never go in. Um, my brother uh, was living in New York City for 10 years, got a job with Accenture, one of the biggest you know, financial consulting firms in the world, used to go in all the time. He is completely remote right? Completely remote. And that's a company of, you know, 50,000 plus people. Um, my, my sister-in-law is a writer for a big life women's lifestyle publication. She used to go into an office in New York city every day. She works from home, totally remote all the time. And I'm sharing this with these personal people with you, just to show you that it doesn't matter what field you're in. A lot of jobs have gone either remote or they've gone hybrid, um, in Los Angeles, um, uh, you know, of course, my friends all work in the entertainment industry, right? Most of them go into the office Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. They get to work from home Monday, Friday. This would have never happened before COVID. So while there are some more traditional careers where, of course, you're going into the office every day, if you're going to work in a doctor's office, um, you're obviously going in every day. Um, but I do want to share that a lot of careers that were traditionally in the office every single day, no ifs, ands, or buts, are not like that. And with remote work presents a lot of you could look at it as new challenges, but I think also a lot of opportunities. Um, I think the biggest struggle with remote work and the biggest struggle I see whenever we bring on um, new team members is just communication, right? If you're not sitting next to someone in a room, how do they know that you're doing anything? And the answer is they don't. They, they do not know that you are doing anything unless you tell them, right? And that could feel intimidating because you don't want to bother anybody, right? You don't want to bug anybody. But if I hire Lauren Luna, which who knows, maybe Lauren Luna comes to work for Intern Queen one day, right? And I hire her and she's in New Jersey and I'm in LA and I don't hear anything from her. I'm like, hello, new hire Lauren. What are you doing? Right? So new hire Lauren has to be really loud, right? And confident about her updates. And she needs to understand from day one, how that company communicates. Is it using Slack? We use Slack at our company. A lot of organizations do. Um, are they communicating through um, a, C a CRM like Asana, right? Or Basecamp? like a project tool management system, but how, you know, are you supposed to just call 
how is, are you texting? You know, are you in a group text? Like, how is this company communicating? So I've seen the biggest challenge for recent grads getting jobs. Um, I see the biggest challenge being um, their ability to communicate what they're doing, right? And I think, again, a lot of it comes from like, I don't want to step on anyone's toes. I don't want to bother them. But the most advice I can give you all, whether it's an internship that you're doing remotely or going into a new job is like, be loud about what you're doing. On day one, identify what channel are you supposed to use for communication and over, you know, over communicate your updates. I would so much rather Lauren Luna say, you know, I had a lot of updates to share and my boss asked me to pull it back a notch than what I see happening almost all the time, which is, you know, my team members having to say to new team members, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Um, another, I think another challenge with remote work is that not only do you, are you scared sometimes to, or intimidated to communicate what you're doing, but you're also afraid to ask questions. And because you're not in a room with people, what do you do if you don't really get it? Right? Like you get this project, but they're speaking a new language. You don't really, you know, you don't know the company's tools yet. Like, what do you do? And the answer is you got to wave your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Right? You have to be really loud about not knowing how to do something. Because what I see happen a lot is that people are intimidated, right? Which makes sense. And they don't want to ask questions. So they do what they think the task is. And then it's not right. And then it leaves everybody in a bad situation because someone either someone has to redo the task or now you have to at 5 p.m. redo the whole thing, right? And we're all trying to work on work-life balance and um, setting boundaries for ourselves and that can be really challenging. So again, um, one of the biggest pieces of advice I have for all of you is to really think about your communication skills and work on them while you're in school, you know, practice them while you're at your internship so that when you graduate, you're really confident about your ability to communicate your workload and ask questions in a remote environment when you need to. So in terms of like transferable skills, I think that's um, definitely something um, you can, you guys can speak about. Um, I've also noticed that with, you know, you're all Gen Zers, like with your Gen generation coming into the workplace, you all have wonderful ideas. I found that most of the, most of the young hires that we have are, it's funny, they're afraid to give updates during the workday, but when we have an actual meeting and we open up a brainstorm session, they're not afraid to contribute ideas. You all, hello, are not afraid to contribute your ideas. And I think that's really special. It's really valuable to have new people come in and have the confidence to just participate in a meeting and share ideas. I think it can be really challenging when you hire new people and, and they don't speak at all, right? And they, you know, you can't get anything out of them. Um, so I would continue to speak up um, you know, a lot of you have great taste and you're really passionate about really specific things. And because of your ability to use technology in a way no one's been able to in the past, you can share some really interesting ideas with, with everybody, no matter what your workplace is. So I would encourage you to share just what you've learned from, you know, growing up in the generation of TikTok and information and all of that with um, as many people as you can when you come into, when you come into your first job. Um, let's see, what else can I share with you guys about what it, is everybody going to Panera? Yep. <laughs> Some background noise, maybe I was like, hello. <laughs> um, let's see. So we have about 10 minutes left. Um, do you guys want to drop in the chat? What would you guys like to hear more about specific internship advice, specific, uh, traits that you guys can, you know, work on in the real world. Once you get jobs, where do you guys feel like you need you need the help. Drop it in the chat. Okay, so Lauren, while everybody's thinking about and dropping something yeah. in the chat, shout out to Brooklyn. I'm from Brooklyn too, so we're gonna talk about that offline. But more importantly, um, can you just talk while everybody's thinking a little bit about how even a bad internship really is a good internship. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I see some notes in the in the chat. So I'm gonna go over these topics and then we will open, I'm gonna go over bad internships. I'm gonna talk a little bit about networking, cover letters, 
and where to look for internships. And then we'll open it up to um to more questions. Well, oh, yes. So um a bad internship does not always have to be a bad internship. I feel like I have to caveat that by saying if for any reason you're ever uncomfortable in any situation, an internship, a job, whatever it is, get your supervisor or get someone, if you can't get your supervisor from school involved ASAP and like get yourself out of that situation, right? If, if for some reason you're uncomfortable personally speaking. However, if it's just an internship where, you know, we'll use the word, the phrase bad internship, or maybe they're not paying a lot of attention to you or the work isn't what you imagined, or the company is what happens a lot is that the company is so busy themselves that they're just not able to spend the time that they thought they would have to spend with you, right, as the intern. So I think with those kinds of experiences, I would just recommend to get what you can out of it. You know, if they're not giving you any assignments, um, ask to sit in on meetings. Um, usually when our interns leave our internship at Intern Queen, the thing that they tell me they like the best is sitting in on meetings and calls. And nowadays, so much of it is on Zoom that it's all possible. So if you are finding that you have nothing to do, I would definitely ask if there's any calls or meetings that you could be included on, because that's a quick way to just not be bored during the day and to really be able to observe professional communication. Um, and then, you know, coming up with tasks, like you have, a, you have a sense of what this company does. Um, if nothing else, you can look at their social media, right? You could see what they need help with and then, you know, pitch ideas to whoever your supervisor is and ask, you know, can I do this? Could I work on this? Um, and then make sure that the projects they are giving you, you're doing a really great job on. I think it can be hard when you have an intern who's asking for more work, but not, excelling at the work they're being given. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, so just real quick running through this list, um, networking. So I'm gonna go back to what I shared earlier with the stay in touch three times per year. That has really been the best way that I've been able to quote unquote network with people. Um, I also think that pushing yourself out of your comfort zone is important. Um, when you're in school, I would set a goal for yourself. Can you attend one networking event a month. That's it. One a month. And that could be so many different things. That could mean your school, that could mean tonight, right? Your school's bringing in um, a guest speaker and you're going to attend the talk. That could mean the club that you're a part of is putting on a mixer. That could mean your professor invited you to go to something, right? It could mean so many different things, but go to one social event that has some type of like professional or academic, you know, spin to it at least once a month. And, you know, we're all human. It's that it's event day. You don't want to go. You want to lay in your bed and catch up on, you know, while well, the Kardashians started last night or whatever you're watching, right? You don't want to go. We're, I'm the same way. We're all like that. But push yourself to go to the thing. And then my tip would be try to do the research ahead of time on who's going to be at this event and come up with a small goal for yourself. Pick two people and say, I'm gonna meet these two people before I leave. I'm gonna meet these two people. I'm gonna to try to get their contact information and then I'm gonna allow myself to leave, right? So just setting small goals like that has really helped me. And you know, you never know, never um, undervalue a contact. Like I'll go to things and I'll meet, you know, a lady that makes popsicles. Like, what do I need to know this lady who makes, pop why do I need to know the popsicle lady? I don't know, but, Maybe I'll need custom popsicles one time, right? Maybe. So don't underestimate the value of a contact. Um, true story. I met this popsicle lady at an, at an event. I took her card. I followed up that night because I'm really big on that just to say it was so nice meeting you. Good luck with your business. And right now, this is like two years later, we're doing this um, college tour of big college events for a brand and we needed uh, a sweet treat. So what did I do? I called the popsicle lady. And now I'm working with her, you know, like it all, it all kind of comes around. So never undervalue someone that you meet just because their job isn't directly related to you. You never know, um, you know, when you might need uh, to step outside of your industry um, in terms of cover letters. And I am just going to remind everybody, check out uh, youtube.com slash intern queen. Um, there's a ton of great content on there specifically on resumes, cover letters, interviews, and then our most popular video that has like, I don't know, maybe like a million views is about how to do your elevator pitch, um, which I'll, I'll touch on in a second. But for cover letters, 
I would always write them. Does everyone read them? No. Every time we do a panel and I ask executives if they read cover letters, it's almost always a 50-50 split. But I would say you have to write it because what if your executive does read cover letters, right? Then you want them to have that. I would keep a cover letter really sort of pointed, meaning that you don't want to go too far off track, right? Why are you the best person for the position? That's what you're trying to answer. Um, make sure you don't tangent by yourself. I have the same advice for interviews. You don't want to talk about yourself so much that like you've lost kind of the purpose of the meeting. The purpose of the meeting is to show people that you are the best candidate for the specific job they're hiring for. So you want to make sure that before you write a cover letter, before you go to an interview, you're reviewing um, that job description again and trying to draw as many parallels as possible. Again, that's within a cover letter and also at a job interview. Um, what else? We we're going to talk about networking cover letters. Oh, where should you be looking for internships? Um, so again, Intern Queen is not, it's not going to be the place to find out about the actual specific internships. It's going to be the place to go to get that internship advice. Um, I would say that the two most effective places to go, or oh, three, three most effective places to look. One is going to be your school and um, your school, I assume has handshake, right, everybody? Um, so your school's career center, they're going to have a list of companies that want to hire your students, right? And I think that's going to be your first stop. And then if you want to do a wider search, I would recommend LinkedIn and then Indeed. Indeed aggregates job listings from smaller sites. So you don't have to go to 100 sites because they're going to pull in a lot of those feeds. Um, so that's what I would recommend. Um, make sure that you are utilizing your career center. Um, or any professors that have great professional experience, which most do, um, because they'll have, you know, great connections and ideas for you as well. Um, and then real quick, um, I see this question's coming in, I'll, I'll answer them. Um, real quick, I did want to touch on, again, our most popular YouTube video, I'll try to drop it in the chat at some point, is um, this how to do your elevator pitch video. I highly re recommend you watch it. People, a lot of people end up like watching it at their first jobs and their trainings and, and things. But the idea is you keep it short, sweet, and to the point. Who are you? Um, why are you excited to connect with this specific human being? And what is your ask? You know, so I have an example on YouTube that you guys will see where I'm like in a fake elevator and the doors open and I, I do my pitch, but it's like, who are you? Um, why are you talking to the person in the elevator that you're talking to? Or, you know, why are you trying to connect with the person that you're emailing or talking to in an interview? And like, what is your ask? Um, are you trying to get an internship with the company? Do you want a job? Like, how can someone help you? I have a lot of people email me and they'll say things like, hi, Lauren, my name is Brian. I want to be um, a film director. Can you help? Right. And the answer is like, yes, Brian, I would love to help you, but I'm going to need a little bit more specific information on how you want me to help you first, right? Like, how can I be helpful to you? So make sure that when you're pitching anybody, right, when you're cold emailing someone on LinkedIn or you meet a stranger and you're following up, like be really specific about what your ask is and how you would like this person to help. I think everybody generally wants to help, but like, how can we help you? in the most, you know, productive way possible. Um, so, oh, good. Yay, you use the elevator pitch video. I love that. Um, so why don't I, I mean, we're, asked, we're, we're kind of here anyways. So if it works for everybody, let's go into our, our Q&A portion here and we'll just kind of do rapid fire and I'll get through as many as possible. And anybody feel free to jump in also on the, um, on the Zoom. It doesn't all have to live in the chat. Um, so let me see, I'll go through these and then we'll see if our group in person has any questions as well. Um, what type of questions do you recommend students ask at the end of internship interviews? Stephanie, great question. Um, I really like when people ask, what are the challenges of this position, right? Because every job has a part of it that's amazing and a part of it that stinks, right? Like every job has its pros and its cons. Well, I, I think it is so important to know what those cons are before you sign up for the job. So a brilliant way to ask that right? Our polished way is just what are the, what are the biggest challenges of this position? 
That's a great question to ask. I also, I also think, um, can you describe, you know, a typical day in this role? Like, a nine, you know, what does it look like? Um, what does the day consist of? You want to make sure before you're saying yes to a job opportunity or an internship opportunity that you have a sense of what you're going to be doing. If you're feeling like, oh, I got this job or internship offer and I have no idea what this position does, it's kind of a flag. You know, I would, I would encourage you to ask questions so you get that pic, you know, a clear picture painted for you. Um, how do you recommend staying in touch? Just casual conversation. So I think you all can be really creative in how to stay in touch. I will tell you, there is a girl actually from, from New Jersey. Her name is Severa and she must've interned for me in like 2012, a long, like 10 years ago, a long time ago. I am in touch with her all the time. I actually just hired Severa to go fly around the country and do a bunch of our intern queen events. And when I think about how am I still in touch with Severa, right? Like how did she do such a good job staying in touch with me over the years? I think it's because she adapted to the communication styles that she saw I was using, right? So she did an internship with us 10 years ago um, out of New Jersey and uh, she would email me, right? And she would email me probably about three times per year to stay in touch. And she didn't always ask me favors. She was like, you know, how's your husband or how's your family? Things like that. Just like really you know, informal kind of catch up chatter. Um, then when she would see that I would be traveling to New York City, she would go out of her way to say, hey, Lauren, I saw on your Instagram, you're going to be in New York for an event. Can we meet up? Can we meet up? And do I say yes all the time? No, because I can't all the time. But I say yes a lot. Like I see Severa probably at least once a year, right? Um, then because she's clever, right? She sees that our company has started to use TikTok. So now she's liking our TikTok posts. Sometimes she'll comment on our TikTok posts and we don't get a lot of comments, so we see it, right? Um, so I think she's just done a really great job of adapting to like our communication styles over the years. So I would encourage you all to do the same thing. If you see that your former internship boss is on Instagram all the time and is like an influencer, engage with that person there. Um, if you see that they're more of an email type, email them. If, if you know they're a texter, then text them. Find out when their birthday is, you know, start there happy birthday before the holidays, happy holidays. And I think you can really build a genuine relationship there. And I will tell you, I literally just took Severa to dinner, her and her friend last week in LA because she was in town. She played with my child the whole time. She's amazing. And then we hired her and she worked a bunch of events for us. So it's kind of funny to like think back to where these, um, where these relationships started. And I'll have to tell Severa that I used her as an example in my talk tonight. Um, if you have multiple internship offers at this at the same time, how do you go about declining offers you don't end up, end up taking? Okay, I think transparency is key. Just be honest and be honest quickly. Try not to linger. And it can be hard, right? Because you get an internship offer and you know that you're waiting for another one that you would like to do more. Transparency is key. Don't let it lapse more than 20. Don't let it lapse more than one business day. Thank you so much for the offer. Um, is it okay if I let you know in two weeks, I'm waiting on a few more opportunities and I just want to make sure I decide, you know, what the best fit is, right? You just got to say it like, it doesn't sound great, but you just got to say it. You have to advocate for yourself. Um, and then, you know, if in two weeks, you don't know, like at some point you do have to make a choice and I would try your best that, you know, once you sign up for something to try to stick with that commitment, of course, there's going to be caveats to that. If this, if an opportunity comes through the door and you just cannot say no to it, then you, you know, very politely over the phone, if you can decline the internship, let them know you are so sorry. If you have a friend that would like to replace you and do that internship and you can recommend them even better. Right. But I think at the end of the day, you do have to advocate for yourself, but you also need to have really great professional, transparent communication the whole way through so that you don't burn bridges. Um, what else is intern queen offering any internships? Great question. So we hire one paid intern every semester and I believe in two weeks. So like the first or second week of October, we are opening up our spring intern search. Um, we are looking for people that have had at least one other internship or professional experience before, because we do have custom, um, we have a lot of like custom technology that we use in our business. And so it's really important to get someone who like, you know, has experience following directions essentially, and can take a set of directions and really show us that they can use the set of directions.
questions and follow them. You know, we're also looking for people that have some critical thinking skills, you know, that can, um, we do a lot of approving content at Intern Queen, you know, approving people's TikTok posts, catching spelling errors, make sure that making sure that when a creator posts content, it looks the same as what was um, approved. So we're, we're sort of in that influencer space a bit, but yes, we are looking and I would love it if any of you um, who are interested want to apply and you can be based anywhere. Right now our intern goes to FIT in New York City. Um, so we'll be looking for that. And that intern will start January and go through early May. What other questions do you guys have? Any from our in-person crew? We are your biggest cheerleader. So Lauren Berger, thank you. But so here's a question. Do you have any um, advice or experience with students that are international? We have a large international population on our Metro campus and they're amazing from all over the world. Is there anything specific you can talk to about their opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of companies want to work with international students, but they do not know how. And so I think that, especially with smaller businesses, right? If you really want to apply somewhere or you meet someone and they really want to hire you, the more you all can really own the process and the paperwork that needs to be filled out and what that sort of journey looks like and be really, again, transparent with the employer and lay it out for them so it feels really easy, I think you're going to find that they're much more willing Um to go through that process with all of you. So again, the more you can outline it, because what, what I see happen so much and it's too bad is that you have a great international student, they apply somewhere and then the internship coordinator is like, I don't know what to do here. Like not my expertise, right? And then they sort of go on to the next candidate. So the more that you can paint that clear picture for them and really articulate your really articulate your value and experience. I think that's amazing. And then of course, there's a lot of companies that do have a pathway to hire international students. They're already doing it. They can do it really easily. Um, and also we have, uh, again, um, check out the Intern Queen YouTube channel. There's like two or three videos that are specifically for international students. In fact, in a video, I think we posted it last year. It was me interviewing, um, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but an author who like specializes in opportunities for international students. So definitely um, check that out. Let's see. How can you be more consistent when being an influencer? So I'll try to answer this question and let me know if you have a, if I'm not answering it the right way. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, look, being an influencer or a creator, whatever you want to call it these days, it's hard. It's a noisy space out there. Everybody's doing it. Everyone's doing these branded sponsorships and ads and things. The best thing that you can do, honestly, is be authentically you. It's, this advice might sound upside down, but like, say no to opportunities that don't make sense for you, right? Just because a jewelry brand messaged you and said they'll send you a free necklace if you post about them. Like if you don't like the necklace, just say no, you don't need it. Like you don't need that free necklace. You'll be fine, right? Even if they're paying you, like if a company is paying you to talk about something that you don't genuinely like or has nothing to do with like the, you know, the professional brand or personal brand that you've created, just say no, it's way too noisy of a space. And you will, in my opinion, you will not survive as an influencer in 2023 and 2024 if you're just doing things for the paycheck, right? Because no one cares, like no one wants to see that. It's so hard. I mean, you know, you're trying to find a cool hat or a cool, you know, makeup brand or whatever it is. Like you, you don't even know what's real anymore because everyone's just doing ads. So it's so hard to find creators that only talk about things that they actually wear or they actually like. So be that person. Um, I would also say, don't worry too much about the follower count. Worry about the engagement. Even if you have a hundred followers on TikTok or Instagram, can you get those 100 people to take an action? Can you get them to be curious about what you're talking about? Um, and then it's also being really thoughtful about, you know, your posts and like, you know, why, why are you posting today? Is this just because you feel like you have to fill content? Because if you do, I'd rather you not say anything, just like post when you have something to say, I think this idea of like, well, I have to be consistent. I have to post every single day, but I have to have this beautiful curated feed. I think that's out the window. 
I don't think it's relevant anymore. We, we're working with Fabletics right now. And one of the key things they told us when looking for creators is they said they didn't want to work with anyone who had a super curated feed, meaning like super posed, perfect pictures that are all one color scheme. We've all seen that. We all want to be that person and can't be, right? So I would just say, be yourself and be authentic to you and what's what's what your life looks like. Um, I think once we all start mimicking other people's lives, we start losing engagement and losing followers and everyone can tell it's kind of fake. Um, was it difficult to manage classes for school and an internship? You know, I was taking a full course load, which I think was, was that like 12 course hours or something. It was like a handful of classes um, every semester. For me, it was okay. I would try to line my classes up. I think like there was maybe one day a week where I would have classes at night. So I would do my internship during the day. Um, and if I did have classes, I would do my classes in the morning so I could go to my internship in the afternoon. So now that a lot of internships are remote, it makes it a lot easier because you don't have to, you know, stop class, commute to the company and allow for all that time. Um, so there's probably a little bit more flexibility depending on the company. But I think, you know, like, like anything else, right? Like managing school and work, like if you can kind of write it out on paper and make it make sense and keep yourself really like regimented and keep yourself in a routine, you can get it done. Um, something we haven't talked about a lot today is um, mental health. So you know, I don't have to tell you all mental health is real. We all, um, you know, are dealing with mental health in our own personal way. Um, just, you know, in terms of just getting overwhelmed and, and dealing with stress, um, try it's so, so much easier said than done, right? Try not to put too much pressure on yourself. We all put pressure on ourselves, but be really careful about the word. Yes. Right. Like when I first started Intern Queen in 2009, the message was do everything, just say yes. And now in 2022, I'm like, no, do not say yes. You do not want to do that. And it, it is such a hard concept to say no. It, it should be easy, but it's really hard. Right. This idea of if you don't want to do something, it's OK to say no. Right. So if you don't want to do this internship, if you're only doing this internship because of like all of the wrong reasons, then just say no to it. Right. I would so much rather you all say no and focus on the things that you've decided are important to you versus saying yes to something that you can't commit to. And, you know, halfway down, you're going to have to pull out of it anyways. And then you're going to burn a bridge with the company. You know, if you get hired for a brand ambassador opportunity and you just, you know, in your heart of hearts, you do not have the time, you just say no right off the bat. Like, just say no. And that goes for everything, right? Plans with like plans with friends, whatever it is. I think there's power in saying no. And there's also a lot of power with saying yes and really try to say yes to the things that you can, you know, commit to and really see through all the way. Um, we have about 20% of our students drop out of our programs because of because of covid mental health or a schedule change and we're always trying to make that number a little bit smaller right so that we don't have as many students dropping out of things because it's you know it's not great for them it's not great for us it's not great for our clients but i think that the best way that i can that i can help that number get smaller is by encouraging students to just not commit from the beginning right if you don't say yes then you don't have to drop out and have that awkward conversation halfway through so again just try to listen to your gut and your intuition and if you know something's not right for you i don't care how cool it is right just just say no from the beginning and i think it'll be a lot easier and, and less stressful yeah any other questions we have five more minutes what else can i help you guys with power session i'd like to ask um ask a question yeah. Um, so sometimes I know that employers post GPA requirements. Some are a little um, on the higher side sometimes. If you have work experience, but your GPA does not quite meet the requirements that the company has set, is there a way to navigate that situation? So I personally, I would ignore the requirement and I would apply anyways, is what I would do. Um, and then if I were like specifically questioned about it in an interview or via email or something like that, I would, I would just state the facts and then I would try to sell myself. Right. I would say, well, you know, while you, you know, while I saw that your requirement was a three, eight, I have a three, two, I'm taking this course load. And I feel that, you know, because of my qualifications, 
previous internships, club work on campus, extracurriculars, I'd really love to be considered for the opportunity. So that's how I would try to navigate something like that. And the same thing goes for companies that say seniors only or juniors and seniors only. I would still apply. Um, it is really, and remember, that's how I got that first internship at the Zimmerman agency. Like it was only for seniors and I just sort of ignored it and I applied and I got it. So, you know, because I've had experiences with that, I think I would be leading you all in the wrong direction saying to just, you know, let all of those uh, qualifications sort of deter you. Um, that being said, I think be prepared for them to say no, which is fine. You know, you'll look for other opportunities and um, what else was I going to tell you? Um, yeah, I would just, I would just go after them. I would be really confident about what you do bring to the table and, you know, you'll go from there. A lot of times I meet students um, when I do talks and things and they'll tell me all of the reasons that, you know, they haven't gone after an internship yet. Like, oh, I was going to get an, I was going to go after an internship, but I don't have this much experience and I really haven't done anything and da, 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 da. And I'll say to them, well, if I were listening to you, I wouldn't hire you either because you just told me all the reasons not to hire you. Like, let's flip the script and let's think about all of the things that you do bring to the table, right? And all the reasons I should hire you. Like, tell me what you're involved with on campus. Like, tell me the classes that you're taking. Tell me about um, a commitment that you've seen all the way through. Like, those are the things that make me want to talk to you and want to hire you. So I, I encourage everybody to, if you're feeling like you've been a doubter lately of yourself, flip the script and think about what you have done versus what you haven't done. We also um, didn't mention extracurriculars too much. That stuff is gold. I see so many people will put together their resume and then at the very bottom, it'll be like Lions Club ambassador. I'm like, what's a Lions Club ambassador? I don't know what that is, right? And then you ask the student and they'll say, oh, that's my student government. I'm in this special group and we manage a budget of $100,000 and we bring speakers and talent and you know musicians to campus. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You just threw a bunch of words on the bottom of a resume. I had no idea what they meant because I don't go to your school, right? And like, you hit all that for me. Like that alone makes me want to hire you. So I encourage everybody to think about what they're doing on campus. Um, and again, don't try not to just throw random things on a resume, even like sorority or like club, you know, clubs on campus that people outside of your campus might not know. Really take the time to like put a bullet point on your resume and really explain what that position means. Um, because again, I think we're all stuck in our own like campus speak and a lot of people don't, don't know what these clubs and groups are. So make sure to sell yourself. Lauren, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so everybody will take themselves off mute and give her a big round of applause. Thank you everyone. Amazing. So the one thing I will plug for Lauren before we show everybody our QR code for PDP points is I actually was fortunate enough to attend the party in Gramercy Theater in New York this summer. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. And as a result of this, and I don't know, Abby, if you're on, but made a connection that one of our students knew somebody that I knew in my other life when I'm not at FDU. And it just goes to show that life goes full circle. So Lauren, thank you. Follow the intern team and maybe you'll attend the party next summer too. Yeah, absolutely. And I just dropped my personal email in here. Um, if you email, you should email me within 24 hours because that's the lesson we all learned, right? But then make sure to follow up with me in about two weeks because um, as I said, I'm in um, 20 year high school reunion land this weekend. So I will probably not get back to you right away, but please do follow up. Um, I would love to stay in touch, look out for our internship, follow Intern Queen, and I'm here to help in any way I can. And yes, you guys are so close. I better see all of you at the Intern Queen Party 2023. It's free and it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it is. I can attest to that. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Stay on for the QR code and we're going to do a winner for PDP tomorrow. It'll be announced tomorrow. So be sure you check all your social media. All right. Everybody's coming up close in our suite to get the QR code. Everybody online have it. You have it? Yeah, got it. I got it. Lord, have an awesome, awesome time at your reunion. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Laura Luna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you.
Thank you.